Today I'm gonna to open up this ball joint and show you what's inside and how it works. On this Toyota with McPherson strut suspension, this is your lower control arm, and this here is your ball joint. It bolts onto the control arm and goes into the knuckle. So this here is the OEM ball joint that's off my Toyota. As you can see, it's quite worn out and the ball joint is fairly loose. And this here is the aftermarket ball joint. The main components include the ball stud, your hardware, a protective boot, as well as your housing. And then on the back here, we've got your backing plate and this one's got a grease fitting. Now the main differences between these two is your OEM ball joint uses a metal stud with a plastic bearing inside. Now your aftermarket ball joint uses a metal stud with a metal bearing on the inside. So it doesn't wear down as fast as the plastic. Now we're gonna open up these two ball joints and see what the differences of the components are inside. Now the way a ball joint is made is this ball stud is pressed through the housing this way. And then this backing plate is put on top and then it's laminated over. So I'm gonna grind off this lamination so I can remove the ball stud. Now I've got a brand new angle grinder. I'm gonna grind open this ball joint. All right, so I'm just gonna take this apart. This is the lamination, it's still a little bit warm. This here is your backing plate, and this here is the spring washer. All right, so I'm just gonna to try to remove that. So this here is your lower centered bearing, and then of course your ball stud. So this is pretty much all the components inside of the aftermarket ball joint. Here we've got the ball stud. As you can see, it's got the thread on the end here with the hole for the castle nut. And then it's got this taper that leads up to the neck in the middle here. And then of course the sphere. And it's got these grease grooves in it. Then we've got the lower centered bearing. It's a powdered metal bearing. And it rides up against the ball stud like that for true metal to metal contact. And then we've got the spring washer which sits on the lower centered bearing. And what that does, it provides some pretension when this backing plate goes on top of it and it's laminated on. Finally, we've got the forged housing here. It's got this grease fitting on it with a hole on the inside so we can grease the internal components of the ball joint and then flush out the contaminants through the boot. Let's open up the OEM style ball joint to see what it looks like inside. All right, so I've got the lamination off here and then the backing plate. All right, so I'm gonna continue opening up the OEM ball joint here. Oh, there we go. We've got the ball stud. And I can just pop the plastic bearing off of the ball stud. So here we've got the ball stud. You got the threads on the end here, the cone. And this ridge here acts like a boot stop to prevent the boot from going down into the neck. And then you've got the sphere, which doesn't have any grease grooves on it. Over here, we've got this plastic bearing, which is interesting. It's actually a two-piece bearing. And it's just got this bottom part where the ball pin rests on and takes all the load and then this outside part that encases the ball stud. One of the very common failure modes of a ball joint is that the neck snaps right here. That could be either due to an inferior material or a very sharp transition between the taper and the neck that causes a stress concentration. Ball stud failures are common on vehicles that have loaded ball joints such as those with double wishbone front suspension. And this is pretty much all that's in an OE ball joint. The housing here has an actual spherical shape on the inside to help the ball stud rotate. Now just for demonstration, I've opened up another bolt-on style aftermarket ball joint and I found a plastic bearing on the inside. Now this one has a much harder plastic material and it came with a spring washer to provide a pretension on the ball stud. Now a stabilizer link or outer tie rod or anything that uses a ball joint uses the same principles that we've seen here. So here I've got an outer tie rod from a well-known OEM manufacturer and I've opened it up and you can see again there's a plastic bearing and then the ball stud. So the question really is, is your OEM ball joint better than the aftermarket ball joint? You see, the key differences between the two is that the OEM uses this flimsy plastic bearing, but it's a sealed unit. But the aftermarket ball joint uses this much sturdier centered metal bearing, but it's a greasable unit. And you see, that's the key. You need to keep this ball joint greased in order for it to outlast the OEM ball joint. Because if you get a little bit of dirt, grit, or the grease dries up in here, then this metal on metal design will actually wear out faster than the OEM design. Now there are some differences in the construction between the two ball joints. Sometimes the aftermarket ball joint uses an inferior material and coating compared to the OEM ball joint which causes them to rust out a lot faster. Another key difference is your OEM ball joints are made to much tighter tolerances than your aftermarket ball joints which makes them so much more expensive. Now most ball joints will fit and work on your vehicle just fine but there may be the odd case where it's off by a few millimeters and cause a weird issue with tire wear or something. So in conclusion if you don't want to pay OEM money for a ball joint you can use an aftermarket upgraded ball joint just make sure you keep it well maintained so it can outlast the OEM ball joint. Well, I'm really enjoying this new grinder. Stay tuned, because next week I'm going to show you what's inside of a steering rack.